Well, it's 6.30 now. Let me know when you're ready, Roxanne. We're rolling. Okay, this time I'd like to call to order the Town of Ledger, Connecticut Community Relations Committee regular meeting for October 21st, 2020. The time is 6.30. Uh, for the record, Councilor Ingalls is present. Councilor Soms is present. Councilor McGratton is present. Roxanne Marr, Administrative Assistant is, is Administrative the council is present and police chief rich is present. Are there any uh, citizen comments? I don't think there's anybody who isn't attached to the group here. Okay. Uh, well, there's some in informational items. Uh, as I sent out an e email to police chief uh, John rich concerning uh, things that the community relations committee was looking to do. Uh, the police chief was kind enough to send back an email, which was listed a bunch of great stuff. Uh, we, it's a pleasure to have uh, police chief Rich here with us today. And uh, that's actually under old business, but if but we're going to try and do this quickly. Bear with me one second. I have yeah. it under informational I'm items. I'm under okay. informational items. So it's next. So we can so we can do it in the informational item. So yeah. Okay. So this time I want to discuss with uh, want to discuss with Police Chief Rich uh, the email. Uh, Chief Rich, uh, in your email you talked about uh, traffic safety and police interaction and police candidate selection. Uh, what just to give you an understanding, what we're trying to do in the community relations committee is we're trying to come up with kind of a list of. Uh, Three or three to five things. Grab the one which is of most uh, important to the town, as has that has that you've been encountered encountering, and kind of attack that one. I don't mean the word attack, but try and discuss that one, and then do an open forum to allow the citizens to understand the process of that. But we we the council is trying to figure out which top three we want to do, which top four we want to do in the order. Uh, so do you want to kind of if you, if you want, could you kind of explain your reasoning? I know you gave the you gave the listing and some just a little bit of a background before that, so we can have a better understanding of the importance of each each one. Sure, um, I tried to come up with my draft, which I did with from my phone, so you can refresh my memory so I couldn't find it on my desktop. But okay. I know that we talked about um, very briefly about traffic safety and um, and traffic control, traffic enforcement. And and those kind of those kind of issues um, as a potential uh, point of interest for people who you know may not understand the department's community safety strategy or public safety strategy. So I, I I'll I'll take you back a, a little bit to um, first of all as you got as you most of you know that I've been the chief here now since uh, January nineteenth of twenty sixteen, and during the course of the early part of my tenure, uh, we were having some serious injury and fatal accidents. Um, and that was one of the first things that we decided to try to um, mitigate uh, as a department in in insofar as it's within our power um, to do so. So we um, started at what we called an accident reduction initiative and, and it involved a few different um, um, concepts. One of them being um, a data analysis of where the crashes were actually happening over the, the prior, I think it was 39 months, so three years and three months. Uh, and then um, the most the most severe, obviously, crashes where, where they were happening, you know, intended to happen, <clears throat> as well as um, an education component where we let people know what we were actually doing and used, uh, which is no longer available, but the smart trailer to display speeds on, um, mostly on Iron Street and Route 214, which was a problem area at the time. And then um, we also, uh, working with Public Works um, Director Steve Maslin and others, uh, we identified um, line of sight issues and shrubbery that was causing the line of sight issue and that kind of thing. And we worked with members of the community who actually allowed um, some um, modifications to their property. In fact, uh, a beautiful woman at the corner of um, Shuville Road and Iron Street uh, allowed allowed Public Works to take out that whole hedgerow that used to um, um, inhibit the line of sight um, to the the uh, west um, as people were trying to exit from Shuville Road onto Route 214. So 
and and those things seem to have um, uh, a positive effect in raw numbers. Um, and part of that involves obviously police visibility and making traffic stops in those locations. I'll say that um, generally in our, our enforcement index is usually somewhere around um, 20% of the time someone will actually get a summons or an infraction ticket and about 80% of the time um, and also we'll give a warning, a written warning or verbal warning um, for the violation. And, that, and that's also in, in line with the values of the department and how we want to actually interact with the community. Um, so I, kn I know I could um, do a data-driven presentation on that, on, on those kind of things, so people might understand the number of times that police officers actually stop uh, vehicles in town for traffic violations, the locations, the reasons, uh, the general reasons, and, and then um, if people have questions about the legalities of those kind of things or or whatever whatever it might be, um, if that becomes a, a, ma a matter for this community to uh, this committee to try to address, I think it's uh, a great discussion. Um, I know I pr probably mentioned um, the selection of uh, before I move on. Is does anybody have any questions on on that um, that aspect of what the police department is doing? Chief Rich. Uh the, when the, in the email you sent, you, you talked about the crash reduction, enforcement and, and discretion, and officer and motor, sa and motor safety. That was part, that was under the traffic safety section. Uh, Great. Yes, so um, officer and motor safety, just ba basically s sometimes letting people know, you know, why does a police officer uh, approach a vehicle in a certain way, or why, why did the police officer approach on the left side or on the right side? And all of those things are situational. And a lot of times, sometimes day versus night, um, we like to use a passenger side approach a, a lot of times because it's safer for the officer whose attention is on the occupants of the vehicle and the situation itself while traffic may be coming at them from their back. So um, just si th things like that, I think, um, might be worthwhile and worthy of discussion because th those are the things that people ask about when they call and make an inquiry. They say, they, well, the officer was um, um, gruff or harsh or rude or that kind of thing. And sometimes we, we get those type of calls or complaints and we check into every complaint that we get. But I think the um, sometimes it's really just a matter of communication and understanding uh, of what either person is trying to communicate or or say or do and to do so safely. So I, I think those I, th I think those might be some good discussions if, if people do have questions in that regard, um, because I think in in a, in a lot of instances, a, a lot of this is may, maybe just a, a, um, either a misunderstanding or a lack of understanding of what the officer is actually trying to do or communicate, um, and that's what we find sometimes. So, uh, as a, another topic that you mentioned was uh, enforcement versus and discretion. I know some people talk about, hey, I've never been stopped, and other people say I get stopped all the time, and it could just be the fluke of the nature. But would you be able to talk about that? So people can understand what may drive that discretion. You know, you got a kid in the car. You know, somebody's going to drop a child off. Or yeah, yeah, great. Um, so disc so we do give our officers a wide latitude for discretion, um, and it, everything um, is based on the situation. Um, as to so obviously during COVID, there's a, there's been a whole a whole bunch of kind of halts on expiration dates for licenses and registrations and all that stuff. And officers end up making traffic stops and person's license or registration is expired and th those they, they basically just get a get a pass on that because uh, the situation is such that people can't go to the dmv and actually renew their their driver's license or registration and and uh, the state has recognized that so and our officers are all trained on 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 those ongoing changes that, that are happening but um we trust our officers and trust their discretion um because they're looking at the situation in totality, hopefully, and like you said, if they're there, uh, if it's a, a family that's going to drop uh, drop a child off at school or at, at a sporting event or that kind of thing, um, I think our officers take a lot of that into consideration. They, you know, they they try to do their best with the understanding. I think because we're all human, and um, you know, many of us have families and children. We've been there, we've been through it, and so we do give a wide latitude for discretion. Um, some some things like 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 we talk about. Um, if you if you see someone going through a, a school bus 
a stop school bus's lights uh, at um, 70 miles an hour, that's not uh, a discretion situation for uh, a warning, that kind of thing. So recklessness, community, community uh, danger to the community, danger to other people, obviously generally becomes a, um, an, an enforcement type of issue versus um, a warning, if you will. But we, all, we also, um, about two, two years ago this month, and I, many, some of you may remember it, um, we conducted a community satisfaction survey, which is really lengthy, I think it was 50 some odd questions, um, to really kind of try to gauge how are we doing in the community. And the, um, the, the results were overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly positive, and there were a few negatives in there, as, as would be expected. And um, one of the biggest issues that, that we, and what I believe to be true, and, and the data kind of bore it out both quantitatively and then qualitatively with people's um, just candid responses was uh, people are more afraid of being hurt or killed in a traffic crash here than they are of being robbed or uh, having their house broken into, uh, statistically. That the, and when, when you asked people to, um, is there any, any other comments you would like to make, I think we got 77 responses out of say 280 people that actually chose to make a comment. And at least two thirds of those were traffic related. More enforcement here, please stop the speeders passing in no passing zone on route 214. All, all, that, that, was, that was the general theme. And that's what we've seen all throughout is that the people in the, in the community are concerned about how people drive here. And so it is a priority for the department to try to, to, try to address that and I described some of the strategy earlier about how we do that. Police Chief Rich, you also talked about the uh, interactions with people who may have mental health or special needs and the training related to such calls. Yeah, yeah, so I, I know that uh, in, in past presentations um, for the Rotary and uh, through Council McGratton as well, um, and with um, Know Your Town, the Know Your Town initiative that we did, there was a great deal of interest in, in um, some of the programs that we actually run in our CIT program or some of the facets of our CIT program, CIT being crisis intervention team training. Um, so we have uh, a, a, a really good percentage of our officers who have been through the, the CIT protocol and CIT training. We have more coming up and we're also getting our dispatchers through um, CIT as well. So CIT is basically kind of a deep dive into um, mental health, mental mental illness, uh, interaction with people who are challenged in, in that way. Uh, there's components of special needs, um, autism. And so officers get um, a really firsthand look at, at what that looks like and how, how to actually interact, de-escalate, make sure that you're being understood, how to use your body, how to use time and space um, and distance to actually de-escalate situations. Uh, when when things are escalated, and in in some in in many cases or a few cases here in town, a handful, something we offer when we have a resident who is um, potentially has the onset of Alzheimer's or dementia and starting to wander, and um, things are becoming less uh, less controllable for the person who's caring for them, uh, or and we we do also have. Um, People who have made us aware of their child with either uh, autism spectrum or Asperger's syndrome type of issues, and how that child presents. And there was there are some families who are genuinely concerned about um, the safety if they ever have to call the police because there's there are situations that they've seen all over the country. I know a recent one happened in Salt Lake City, which was a disaster, where um, a, a police officer shot a uh, an autistic um, teenager. So. The way we try to uh, mitigate that and get out in front of it is through our CIT program, offering what we call a special needs registry and um, families who we, we encounter in the community on calls who have any one of those issues. It could be a memory issue, uh, a acquired brain injury type of issue with a loved one. It, it could be an autism type of issue and um, behavioral health in escalation in those situations. Uh, the, the families have, have given us the information on their loved one, we enter it in our system, usually has uh, a picture attached as well. So we, we the, the office can look at it, at it right inside their, um, in their, in their computer as they're responding to a call for service. And then what it also does if, if, is if somebody wanders or is missing either a child or, or, a, or an adult, 
um, we have the picture already and we're not scrambling to try to um, get information that we can get out to the public. So it serves a lot of purposes, but um, I think we're we're proactive in the, in that regard. And every time an officer runs across a situation like that, they encourage the family to, hey, why don't you just join our special needs registry so we have that that type that information in in case something does happen. And one of the things that um, has been um, really effective is parents know how to how to de-escalate their children with those special needs if, if there's a behavioral health issue. And those parents give us that information. Some, some, sometimes it's as, as simple as turning on the faucet. It could be something that distracts them, redirects them. Um, sometimes it's an object, uh, a favorite um, blanket or something like that. And, and we put that right in the information so the officer has it at their fingertips if they're responding to the residents. So I, I think, I, you know, I know, I know there's a great deal of community interest uh, in that, and I realize I just went dark because I haven't moved enough to keep my lights on. So <laughs> give it a wave here, maybe, or, or maybe I'm just supposed to go home by this time. I'm not sure. But <laughs> anyway, um, I I think um, again, that's I think that's a, a great a great one for discussion uh, because it 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 does get a great deal of reaction from people who are not aware of it. Um, so how how, how we you know, handle handle the situations in our community. Um, and we've I've talked to Superintendent Hartling about it as well, and we've tried to make it aware um, the community aware of it also through the schools um, and through the special education um, providers as well. So the, those you know those are um, I think points of interest for people in the community because there there is anxiety over how if, should I call the police? My child my child is completely out of control. Is it at the point where I need to call the police? And if I do call the police, do I, what do I have to worry about? Do I have to worry about the police injuring my my child or worse? And we we just try to our best to stay out in front of that. And if if we can, I think that's one of the best the best things that we can do um, is to have that information available in advance um, and at the fingertips of the officers who are responding. So it's a matter of training and, and also the programming that we have at the department that I think maybe helps out with that uh and the one, one last issue was uh candidate selection process uh yeah. i know we're unfortunately we're losing a lot of officers uh it appears we've lost some, quite a few yeah we had one retirement um recently in the past couple of weeks and then in the past three months we've had three officers resign for various reasons one one stayed in law enforcement went to a different department and two of them completely left law enforcement so um i know when you when when the discussions start to come come up about police misconduct or police uh, police issues, police brutality, and that kind of thing, there, there's a natural tendency, and, and and I agree with the tendency is is to say, how do they pick these people? You know, how could a situation like that have happened? How could this have gone wrong? And people start to look at that. So one 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 of the basic risk management um, techniques that 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 we use or, or processes is is our selection process and trying to, to select the right people and have them be the right fit for our community and our department. But um, there's a there's a rigorous process in Connecticut for the selection of, of police officers and um, the, requ the requirements are rigorous. And I, I, I know that because obviously we're neighboring Rhode Island and I have a brother-in-law who's a police chief in Rhode Island. And um, some of you know that I grew up there and my father was a police officer in the city of Providence. Um, it's totally different. Uh, in, in fact, a person, the Connecticut uses a polygraph examination, and not every state does um, to for to examine police candidates. And the polygraph is is a real a, a frequent point of elimination. But a person who fails a polygraph in Connecticut because it's required can go apply for a police department in another state where it's not required, and it, and they may end up getting selected as a police officer. So. Um, the I think people may be interested in the level of uh, review and examination that goes into the selection of a police candidate in Connecticut. And then another thing I think may be a point of interest as well is, you know, we're we're really high on officer wellness here, both mental, physical, um, and mental, physical, emotional health here, and that's one of the things that we concentrate on, and we get a lot of support from the community in that regard as well, and. 
it's not just selecting the right person, it's, it's, keep, it's keeping that person healthy and well for the entirety, hopefully the entirety of their service. And there's, there's some special considerations that go along with that based on the things that police officers respond to and the traumas that they incur in the course of the line of duty. Um, I know some of you know, uh, more so than others, some of the events that we've, uh, that we've experienced here in our department, both uh, personally and professionally. And we, we always make it a point to um, keep open communication and also provide services for our officers um, whenever they need them in, in the um, aftermath of critical incidents. So again, being, being proactive and trying to stay out in front of it and, and keep our people healthy and well, um, I think is also um, a real sound practice. Um, it's, it, it makes for a good working environment here and a good team environment. So um, people, may, people may be interested in that as well. So as you, as, you, as I know, you all know, and you can hear in my words, uh, I have a tremendous amount of confidence in the officers who serve here. And uh, I think um, in the conversations in the aftermath of the George Floyd incident and all those things that happened, um, I know, you know, again, I, I feel like some of the information that we could provide could be reassuring to the community about how we, um, how, how we police the community, um, how we use our data, um, how we select our people, hopefully that so they can have that um, same sense of confidence that that was borne out in in our um, community satisfaction survey in 2018, and maybe you know not certainly things have changed uh, in two years time, but um, our philosophy and our mission statement and our core values haven't changed there, so. Mike, you're muted. Okay, I lost. Okay. I, I lost. Oh. Muted. Uh, okay. Given given the discussion with uh, Police Chief Rich and setting up the do, I know in, later in the schedule we talk about uh, sorry the agenda. We step. We talk about the next meeting for. Uh, informational meeting. And so what, what would you guys, what's your opinion on the topic so that we can schedule chief rich. And there's a lot here. I don't know if we can attack 1 of these. Like, as a group, like traffic safety. And then come behind that with uh, probably a little bit about the police interaction. With the special needs, because I don't know. How, to do a discussion. I'm trying to, so just count on this to do a discussion on this and then feedback from the community. What's that level of confidence on which one we should do? And I'm directing this at Councillor Ingalls and Councillor Psalms on, a, on a, an approach tat, uh, an approach method so Chief Rich can put something together so he'll know what he's coming into. <laughs> sure. Okay. Based on the conversation that we had in the joint meeting with the Mashantucket Pequots, um, I think that the traffic safety issue is one that will resonate. I think it already resonates. I think we heard that from Chairman Butler, that that is, it's something that it's, it's a point of frustration. So um, of these three, and each of them is pretty robust on its own, of these three, well, I agree that the traffic safety one makes sense for me to do first. I might flip the other two and do the um, uh, candidate selection second. Um, yeah. But, you know, honestly, there's no bad place to start here. That's just my two cents. Bill? Councilor. So, yeah, but, hi, thank you, Mike. Uh, this is Councilor Song. I, I just looked at the clock and I think we could address all three in exactly the way you and Chief Rich just did. Um, you asked Chief Rich to speak about each topic, and he did. Um, I'd like to add a couple of subtopics to those, but my point is it only took 30 minutes. And then we could also ask participants if they have questions for the chief 
over and above that. But, but just getting through the three topics that, that we just talked about only takes a half hour, which I think is a, I, I think it was great. I think it's a reasonable amount of time and I think it was well done. And I, I would just do it again. The two that I would add um, to be more specific about what resonates with the tribe, and I, I first heard about this issue from you, Chief, so we know it's an issue, um, but I'm, I'm pleased that we first heard from you, not the tribe, and that is the spiritual center and uh, running radar on Chuville Road. I think it would, it would help to speak to that again um, I know that all of the counselors have spoken with you about it, but I think it would be helpful to address that specific issue because it did come up on our on our call with the tribe. The second item uh, regarding candidate selection, I know there's also interest in, and let, let me say it this way, there are questions that go like this. How come we don't have any women on the force? Or how come we don't have any Hispanics? And I know that the department is trying to do that, but there's a very different take on it. It's kind of eye-opening, so I, I'd like to hear from the chief about what it's actually like looking for those candidates. Hmm. Uh, now, Bill? Um, well, yeah, then, but now, too, for those who haven't heard the answers, I mean, it's, it's Bill, a very Bill, different perspective. And it, so, yeah. Bill, just to clarify, Bill, just to clarify, your your thought is that we could actually tackle all three of these in one sitting with the public? Yes. Yes. Okay. It'd be an hour. It's an hour and fifteen minutes. Uh, and worst worst case scenario is if we if we attack it in in sections, if we don't get to a section, we can always carry that section to an to another uh, yep. to another informational. Okay. We could actually run them back to back and have the, have the if we don't get through the first. All the first informational have the next following following it following meeting as an informational also, uh, and we can we can finish up with whatever that was. the The only thing that becomes a little problematic uh, is police chief Rich. Uh, we've done it during the day, and we'll probably do this again. We'll do it during the day, get a lot of exposure out to the town, and then also one during uh, the evening. A lot of exposure to the town, so we can get the people who can't make it during the night, who are available during the day, and vice versa. So the the only thing I'd, I'd like to let you know is that we probably have to have you come at least twice to hit both sides of the community type deal. Does that? I'm, I'm not sure. It. Could so? Can I speak to that? Yes, go ahead. I think if we just we advertise it widely and record it. <laughs> <laughs> You're folks right. Folks who can't, folks who can't be yeah. there, can can watch the recording, and and we sh we need to create a way for them to then follow up with any questions they have via email or whatever. But um, I'm I am also concerned about spreading everybody too thin. Yeah. Yes. I, I Council Ingles, I completely forgot we vi we videotape this, and we record. So that's a that's a perfect yeah. point. No need to do it twice. You know, the, the, the off answers can all be addressed separate at another invite. In your position, Councilor Soms? I agree with Andre. And, and also, um, a, a second comment, I think we have to structure it very carefully. Because if you, if Chief Rich talks about the first issue, whatever the first issue is, and then we open it up to questions and answers, we may never get to issues two and three. So I think we should explain to people up front that this is what the agenda is going to look like. The chief is going to have a question and answer with the chair, with you, Mike. Yep. Um, we're going to cover three topics. We're going to go all the way through it, and everyone will be muted until we get through those three topics. And then we open it up to question and answer on any or all of the topics and give people a, a, a time limit. This is an informational session. It's not a public hearing, so I think we can say, you know, you've got, you can ask your question, and then the chief will respond, and then you can follow up with another question. And total, you've got three or five minutes, mm -hmm. and and that, that way everyone gets to be heard. I I agree. So prior to scheduling <laughs> that, then. 
uh, let's for the committee put together the uh, kind of a flow because I think the flow we just talked about talking about traffic safety, then addressing uh, the traffic safety. I think covered. We'll we'll, cut, we'll have it in there the spiritual center and the radar in Shoeville Road because that's part of the uh, crash reduction because that was one of the things that was driving the uh, the enforcement over there. If I'm correct. And then the, the next part being, as Andre alluded to, was the police candidate selection process so, so people in town would understand. Okay, and then the third would be the uh, police interaction part. And we would put this together as the, uh, as out with the informational. Police Chief Rich, we give you a copy of this so you know, you know what's coming. It'd be literally what we just did now with a different order. So this has been a great, you weren't expected to be here. We just happened to get lucky that you showed up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I'm I'm happy because you had a chance to see the talk about the questions. It'll help us. Add. And I think the data part on the traffic safety and the crash reduction. I think a lot of people don't understand that that information is being tracked, and that's part and that's what's driving some of the things that are being done. Uh, does that sound? I'm reaching out to counselors now and, and Chief Rich. Does that sound like a reasonable uh, direction to go? Yes. So, so, for the next informational, yeah. do we want to push that off to in two weeks or four weeks? So, there's do we, is two weeks Your enough time meeting, to Right. Uh, your November meetings are November the 4th and November the um, 18th. Because part of me to, I know, November. The, Part of me likes the November 18th date only because it gives the time to get it out there. I don't know. Is two is four weeks too long and two or two weeks too short? What's the what's the uh, general consensus on that? I, I'm all for sense of urgency, but I think that particular date is charged with uh, that's right. It's the day whatever after the election tensions might arise after post election. So I I would say November 18th would be you know let whatever happens let it settle for a while. And uh, and because we want to have a conversation. Yeah, I, I, that's a I, great yeah. point, Bill. Thank you. Something told me right down November eighteenth. Uh, it just gives us a lot more time to get other people interested. Also, uh, okay. So what we'll do is, uh, Chief Rich is, we'll put together. It'll be the it'll be the same run through. It'll be the traffic safety, uh, the crash reduction, the enforcement discretion, officer motorist safety. Uh, I'm going to insert in there with the with the crash reduction enforcement discretion, the spiritual center and radar in Shoeville. I think they tie in. But I'm going to I'm gonna, to make this easier because you'll be doing the presentation on that part, Chief. Is I'll put together the uh, um, we can do it now with the council, uh, the steps we want to take per se, and then provide that to you a couple weeks, two weeks before, three weeks before. Uh, so that you you'll know this the order and if there's a difference in order, I don't think the order that we give you is overly important. If you have a better order for your presentation, and so but if you change the order, I would just want you to let me know what that order is so we can present the order for the question and answer. So that, that way you'll know what's coming when I ask you the question. You'll you'll know what question's coming up. Type deal. Sure. That sounds, that sounds great. Psalms and Councilor Ingalls. My question to you is, I can I can put the listing together and send it out to Roxanne and cut you guys all in on it. Uh, I think in a nutshell, I can walk through it right now with everybody here. If you want, it's going to take two minutes. For as, as far as it. the, okay, so my, and, and this will be subject to change, Chief Rich, if, if you see an order that doesn't, that doesn't flow for you. I think we talked about the fact traffic safety was number one. Now, under traffic safety, there's crash reduction and as one of the items, enforcement and discretion as one of the items, officer and motorist safety as one of the items, and also the spiritual center and the rate on Shoeville as an item that addresses the uh, concerns that the Mash and Tuckabee Quack Tribal Nation has, has provided us. And that would be the traffic safety part. Then after that, we would do the police candidate selection and discussion about the makeup of the police department, how we got to where we're at, and 
and the difficulties and, and challenges it takes to fulfill the, fill the positions because I know it's got to, especially in this, this day and age, it's got to be tough because of uh, the immunity issue. It's tough on families to have to sweat that out. Uh, and then behind that would be police interactions with relative to mental health, uh, special needs, uh, and then the training that's related to such calls. Does that seem like a reasonable flow? Go ahead. Yeah, also, uh, Mike, under a sub point under candidate selection was Bill's point about why don't we have women on the force? Why don't we have more minorities on the so? Yes, that's part, that would be that would be part of the makeup of the police department. So that'll be. Oh, the women. sorry. Okay. Okay, got it. Yeah, but I'll, we'll make that we'll make it a special emphasis on that just so it doesn't get lost. Okay. Thank you. I think we have a plan then. We so have I think a plan. That part, <laughs> we'll get that out to you, Chief Rich in a written form so you can hold on to a piece of paper and see it. And then if there's something you don't like on the on the flow, I, I don't think the counselors are, will object to slight modification as long as we cover those items. Mike, just one question. Jamie. Do you think any types of slides for illustration would be um, helpful in the discussion? Um, or is it overkill? It, it, it's your presentation. Uh, the the, on, the only the uh, only limiting factor is we'll need Bill's assistance to make sure it gets up on the board because <laughs> I I struggle all the time. I was in a meeting. I I threw myself out of the meeting. I was the one who was running it. So I tried to load something on the board. <laughs> so, I like the idea. It's just as I can't guarantee I can make it work. <laughs> But uh, if you get us anything you want to demonstrate, I think we can work through that work through those part those portions so we can easily upload it. And I'll take the time also. It, it'll be a great thing for me to learn. So if you have a slide or something you want to be able to post up, just give us copies of it. And I think okay. his ability with Roxanne to be able to take over Bill using Bill's uh, savviness to be able to post stuff up on the screen, uh, he would be greatly appreciated, Bill, <laughs> if possible. <laughs> so. Okay, well, <laughs> thank you. So whatever is uh whatever you need for your presentation, I think we can accommodate and, and make work, uh, Chief. Great. I I think with that, you you don't have to stay on any longer. <laughs> is there okay. any questions for the chief? <laughs> no, so thank you, Chief, us. for coming. Appreciate it. Really appreciate it, Chief. It, it's my pleasure. Yeah. I'm happy to do it. And and I, I think it's an it's an important discussion, it's an important conversation. Um, going forward for all of us in, in all of us in the community. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Good night, Chief. Good night. Have a good night. Okay. At this time, I'd like to uh, do a review and approval of the prior minutes. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? <laughs> There it is. Councillor Soms <laughs> moves the minute. Councillor Soms move, makes a motion. Councillor Engel seconds. All, all in favor say aye. Councillor Engel votes aye. Councillor Soms votes. Councillor Washington votes aye. Uh, three, three in favor, none opposed. And that was a blocked vote. Old yep. business. I don't think. Uh, the mission statement, and until until we get part get through this part, I don't think we need to move on the mission statement. The whole, whole idea of having the informationals is so we can put together a good mission statement. So, if Councillor Ingalls and Councillor Soms is agreeable, I'd like to just hold that off until we get through our our working uh, our informational. Sure. Uh, continued discussion, objections, and goals. I think that that's going to flow through with our. With our mission statement and our informational meeting, which we will schedule as shortly, continue discussion regarding community workshops and schedules. Uh, based on the conversation just recently with Chief Rich, uh, can can we schedule a November eighteenth informational meeting uh, to discuss uh, the traffic safety pol uh, police 
candidate selection and uh, police interaction. So by yeah, consensus. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mike, I have a, a something I just want to mention or just discuss briefly. Um, Councillor okay. Psalms, um, last time we mentioned this, Bill, you had talked about creating a a Facebook event or a calendar event. I'm not sure if a Facebook event is the right uh, thing, but um, yeah, are we going to yeah. do do it that way or, or something I of the like? Good. Yep. Okay. Uh, I, I agree, I, I, and I think I think that makes it way more shareable. Um. Yep. So, if I could request, Bill, could you make me a a co-administrator or whatever it would be on that? Yeah, I, I originally under was going to put it on the Ledger Community Events. Okay. Um, but I wonder, you have to be a member of that group, don't you, to be able to see it? I don't know. So should I just? That's a good question. I, I don't know. Yeah, I'll you have to, Linda. I'll ask. I'll find out so that it's not a challenge with sharing. You do have and to, uh, Councilor Psalms. You do have to uh, kind of like join the. So if you're not on there, you're not. It's not going to pop up on yeah. your feed. That's correct. what I think. So the other thing we talked about was doing it on the town's Facebook page. Yeah, um, that might so, be the way to go. Even for FOI, yeah. that really might be the yeah. way to go. I, yeah. I'll figure it out, and I will uh, let you guys know via email what, what I'm doing. But my thought was we create an event somewhere, and then the three of us share it on our own personal pages. Yeah. And ask yes. people to share it and, and get the word out that way. Correct. Perfect. So I got it. Thank you. Item number four was discussion regarding drafting a memorandum of understanding between the town of Legend and Mashtuck and Peacock Tribal Nation. I did uh, have a email between uh, with uh, Mrs. Potter from the Mashtuck and Peacock Tribal Nation. They're still looking at it. They're to they're still vetting it on their side. Uh, as everybody's aware that we have the holiday uh, baskets are going to be created soon, and uh, that being the case uh we need to kind of move on this a little bit so discussion with her was through the email was to, to tell people tell our social services group that we are going to if you're a resident of the town and you live on town town taxable property or should i say non-tribal land then you come to town of ledger and that came from uh, mrs potter she goes if you live in the town of ledger and you're not on tribal land, you go, you go to the town of Ledger. So even if you're right. a tribal member, if you own a house in Ledger, you, pay, right. you still come to the town right. of Ledger. Yeah. That's your that's your first place you yes. come to. You can go to the right. tribe, but they, their expectation is you're coming to the town first because you're paying taxes to the town, your property is being taxed by the town. But if it's not being taxed right. by the town, you're going to, uh, and it's, it's tribal land. I shouldn't say not taxed by the town, but if it's tribal land, you're going to the tribe. And that's what they wanted. Yep. Uh, I don't think there's okay. any other old business property. Mike, is that has that um, has that communication been passed on to the mayor and social services? No, it came in two days ago. I think I may have forwarded it to Roxanne, but I have not forwarded it to. Uh, did I forward it to you, Roxanne, by chance? I'm trying to get better at it. Yes, you did, and I I asked you if you wanted me to forward it on to the mayor, so I can do that in the morning. Perfect. Thank you. So I have a question about this. Um, it, it's a, a slightly odd situation. We have a proposed memorandum. We've sent it to the tribe. We've discussed it at the last meeting with the tribe, but they're still reviewing, but the direction they've given us is please follow it. And I, I think that's, I mean, I think that's what we all agree we want to do. I, what I'm mystified is about is why it's taking so long to say yes. We all agree. Um, I don't. So perhaps we should send a letter from the mayor. We should ask the mayor if he would send a letter back to Ms. Potter and say, pursuant to your memo to us, this is the policy we will follow in the town of Ledger. 
just to close the loop, because I think we're all in agreement on what we want to do, but I think we should have something in writing that says this is what we are doing, so there are no more questions while we hash out the legalities of the actual final document. I think that's a good idea to leave a communication trail in writing. I think that's an excellent idea. I definitely concur. Excellent idea too. Yes. So we'll send, we'll have something sent out to the mayor. Uh, to have the mayor send something out to the Mashantucket Pequot Tribal Nation, just reiterating what they, they've already responded back to us, and we'll use as backup as the email from Mrs. from uh, Mrs. Potter. Mm -hmm. And it, it is a slightly different um, guidance than what was given, you know, five years ago yeah. verbally. It yeah. is different guidance that now they're asking five years ago, they asked that tribal members be sent back to the tribe. Now they're asking that tribal members please be serviced by the town. And that's fine. We just need to know what the guidance is so that we can follow it. Yes. And uh, we, we'll still push on them to get it. They don't have to, granted, they don't have to sign the memorandum of understanding, but at least as long as the town of Ledger puts out, here's our plan, I, I believe it's reasonable and it's, you know, and, it, and it's, it's in the best interest of anybody who's a resident uh, on town taxable or uh, who's a resident of town of Ledger and not, and not on tribal land. So under new business, I think uh, we're going. To, we've already just reviewing discussion of information forms from this from ten seven and and ten eight. We've talked about it already at some length in the uh, in the sense of we did not we our ability to reach our target audience was not that good. I think with the with Bill's plan of getting uh, getting a um, out on the event page and sharing that information, and we share it off across. Our, our own uh, personal accounts. And I'm, I'm a member of the, these other web pages, so I'll post things up there also. When I do my share, I'll also post, out, post the information up as an invite to people, just trying to elicit uh, people to come. And I'll, I'll talk to some of the groups that, uh, oh, there's a couple groups I know that I, they can probably reach out also, just so we get as many people as possible to, to come to the uh, informational concerning the, the, uh, the police department. So that me that uh, informational will be on November 18th. It'll be a 6:30 informational meeting time. Roxanne, it'll be for our typical meeting time. Right. Okay. Got it. Uh, we were going to do a discussion of the process of for approval and filing of minutes for the joint meeting with the Mashantucket Pequot Tribal Nation Social Justice Equality and Inclusion Committee subcommittee. There's two ways to look at this. My perspective is it's 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 the town's meeting. It's the town's minutes. Uh, it'd be nice to be able to, they know what our minutes are. I think we forwarded, forwarded off our minutes to them, I think. Uh, we haven't heard anything back. Uh, in absence of a comment, uh, we will we, we will move our minutes moving forward. Uh, I, I don't think that's gonna be an issue, uh, but we'll set as a, as a standard, we'll provide them the minutes but we'll pre we'll we'll put down we'll put out our minutes, and if they have something that they disagree with, uh, they can always present that prior to. But the minutes are the minutes of the person, who, the group that took them, you can, and people can make it take exception to them. But since it's a group meeting, it's only appropriate I thought to allow them to see the minutes before they got posted. Does uh, Councilor Ingles, Councilor Psalms, does that uh, make sense, or is there just you know? Want to be as inclusive as we can, given all the all the dynamics of everything going on. Yeah, absolutely. Right. right. Well, you know, the bottom line is we don't have authority over their minutes, and they don't really have authority right. over us. It's it's an invitation to comment, but but we each need to do yeah. what we're required to do. So. Yep. Exactly. Uh, discussion of scheduling a future meetings with the Mashantucket Pequot Tribal Nation Social Justice Equality and Inclusion Subcommittee. Uh, now that's a discussion on. I think it's maybe a quarterly event. I don't. I don't. I'm not sure. I think how that's often. a good goal. I yeah. think quarterly is a good goal, and I think that we should also make sure to specifically and personally invite each member of that committee to the informational session with the chief. Yes, I concur. Yeah, 
Good idea. Uh, now, that being said, the last time you met was in October. Do we want to wait? Just put it out there for about every four months. Pick a pick a time. Then it can sometimes it could be our regular meeting window period, or because I don't really want to add another meeting per se yeah. just for that right. one. Yeah, so it would, I'd I'd say every three months and on our regular meet, one of our two regular meeting nights would be ideal. I agree. And I think we met at the end of September, which puts us at the end of December, but I'm not so sure that's a great idea. So maybe we're looking at early I'm, January. Yeah. I'm good with January. Yeah. I'm good with January. <laughs> probably the probably the second meeting in January. Only because the first mm -hmm. one will be near the New Year's. So looking. So the second meeting in January, we'll give them an invitation to see if that works for them. That would be January 20th. January 20th? Yes. Could, uh, Roxanne, could you reach out to the um, Master Second Pequot Tribal Nation uh, Community Relations Committee? And ask them if they they'd be interested in attending a meeting on January 20th, 2021 at 6:30. It'd be via. I'm assuming we're going to still be in this uh, Zoom type atmosphere. Yeah, I will do that. Because my thought process is, the earlier we get it out there to them, the easier it'll be to accommodate that date, accommodate that date. Hopefully, right. we don't have to push, have a meeting on a Thursday or a Tuesday. Right. That moves me next to the community relations committee uh, meeting dates for the, for the year coming up for 2020 into 2022. I, I checked the dates. Excellent job, Roxanne. They all, they don't, they don't appear to hit anything that's wrong. <laughs> we don't have a holiday or anything like that that I noticed on the dates. So do we have to do, we need to do this by motion, don't we? Or can we do it by yeah, consensus? Just, can, um, just make a motion for the community relations committee to continue to meet on the first and third Wednesday of each month at 630 for the 2021 calendar year. Do I have a motion? So moved. Goals moved. Second. Second by Councilor Soms. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none. Uh, count, I'll do roll call. Council, Councilor Ingalls? Aye. Councilor Soms? Aye. And Councilor Washington is an aye. Three, four, no abstentions, no, no nays. Motion passes. We have a new calendar that takes us into 2022. Wow. Uh, uh, meeting schedule town, uh, meeting schedule town council 2021 draft. Yeah, Thank just you. everyone on that. So that okay. you can just skip. Okay. Yep. Some of the stuff. Okay, is there any other business that anybody yeah. can think of? I have one thing I, I should have brought up under informational and I will yep. send this to you. I found this very interesting. Um, while we are in our public hearing next Wednesday, uh, there will be a CCM session. It's a Facebook event. It starts October 28th at 6.30 and it goes until 8. So if we have a short meeting, I'm planning to join this thing. Um, CCM has been very helpful to us. Um, it's the Connecticut Conference of Municipalities. Um, and we go to their uh, municipal finance session every year. This one is called Communities Advancing Racial Equity Series, Eastern Connecticut. And this will be a discussion. The panelists are Michael Passero, uh, Dwight Bachman, who is Willimantic NAACP, Patrick Daly, Chief of Police in Norwich, 
Benjamin Watt, Senior Pastor, Shiloh Baptist Church, New London, Jennifer Mogeo, Mogeo, Deputy Director of Health, Ledge Light, and Yolanda Negron, Leader in Latina uh, Unidos, New London. Um, I'm going to try and join. I'll just forward you guys this event. And uh, if you're free, might be interesting to join. Please do. No other further business? Nope. I'd like to, at this time, I'd like to adjourn the meeting at 725. With no exceptions. No exceptions. Not We're done. <laughs> I was trying to keep it under an Thanks. hour. You did. Good job, Good Mike. Job. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. All right. That's Good it. Bye, y'all. Good night. Have a great night in Ledger's tutu tie in soccer. <laughs> All right. <Bye. laughs> Go Ledger. <laughs> yep. Thanks.